and, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even in foreign cities, in foreign cities, in foreign cities. While, while thus occupied, I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, among the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. Verse 14, and when, and when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goals. And so I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand to your feet, for I have appeared to you for, for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which will I shall which yet reveal to you. And I will deliver you from and I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith. Therefore, King Agrippa, I am not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but I declare first to those in Damascus and Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judah and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do the work benefiting repentance. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both small and great, saying no thing, no, no other thing than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, and that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim the light to the Gentiles. And now, as he thus made this, this, this defense, Festus said in a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving, driving you mad. And he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speaking the words of truth and reason. For the king, for, for the king before whom I speak freely, knows these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escape his attention, since, since these things was not done in a corner. And King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do believe. Then King Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Verse 29, and Paul said, I would, I, and Paul said, I would to God that only you but also all who hear me today might become might become both almost and together, such as I am, except for these changes. Amen? I know that was a lot of reading, but let me run through this right quick. Let's take note first. He gave, King Agrippa gave, he gave King Agrippa Jesus' commission to him. He is sending him to open up the eyes from the darkness to the light, from the dominion of Satan to God, and from the inheritance. Paul is showing us how he got the message of salvation. First, Paul got permission. That's something we always got to remember. When we walk up to somebody, we just can't walk up and say, hey, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Paul first got permission. And he spoke for himself with confidence and made the statement, I think myself happy. In other words, when you're proclaiming the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can't look all downcast. Like, they're looking at you. I want that Jesus that you got. But Paul said, King of Rome, I think myself happy. He acknowledged that King Agrippa was an expert in the customs and questions that have to do with Jewish traditions. Don't take it for granted that the person you are talking to have no knowledge about Jesus. Amen? Ask them to be patient with you while you talk. Isn't that what Paul did? said, so don't be afraid to tell someone what God delivered you from. Even if it goes as far back as your youth, that's the hard time. So that's the hard thing sometimes, isn't it? 
Because sometimes people say, well, I, I ain't experienced, I ain't did that. But if you are so real with God and God is real with you, you're not afraid to tell people what God has delivered you from. He said that he knew from the first that he was in the strictest sect. He was a Pharisee. Paul is telling King Agrippa, this is how I used to live. See, sometimes we're, sometimes we're afraid to tell people how we used to live. Be sure of yourself when you proclaim the promise and hope of Jesus Christ. Be transparent. Don't be afraid to tell someone you struggled with something. Paul is, telling, Paul is telling us that, that he is now a Christian because he struggled with something and this is what God delivered him from. Amen? Amen. Allow God to receive all the glory for changing your life. See? Allow God to receive that glory. Amen? Because if you allow God to receive that glory, then you're telling whoever you're witnessing to that God has another plan for my life than this. Mm. Paul had to allow King Agrippa to understand that he knew the gospel. But Paul also let King Agrippa know what his spiritual birthday was, too. Amen? Paul is telling King Agrippa details. Sometimes, sometimes when he said, I think myself happy, he's telling him, I'm not hiding anything from you. Paul is calling him by name. Learn the person's name that you're witnessing to. And call them by name. When he used that, that term, kick the goals, about to close here. But when they use that term, keep the goals, this is what it, this is what it was, a pointed rod to urge an animal, something that urges or stimulates into action or spur on. Let's look at it from this standpoint. To kick against the goals is nothing less than an experience of vanity, brutal, and pointless. The Greeks and the Romans used this saying to imply a ruinous existence. I'm going to say that again. They used this phrase to describe a ruinous existence. Paul had to learn that he could not fight against Jesus because it was a battle that he was not going to to win. So when, when he when we read that, he said kicking against the goals. In other words, he's saying that he was living a life of a ruinous existence. Amen? Amen. I'm about to close here. God gives us reason why he's doing so. He said to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, the purpose, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Christ Jesus. My life, your life, is a purpose that everybody who sees you, who comes in contact with you, will be able to walk away from you and knowing why Jesus Christ died on the cross. Why Jesus Christ rose on the third day. Because when they leave from you, they're, 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 they're hearing what Paul said, hey, O oh King of Rome. Paul is telling King of Rome, don't waste no time. He made a statement, he said, you almost convinced me. But you know what I came to understand when I was reading this is that if Festus wasn't sitting there, King and Ripper would have came around. But since Festus said, Paul, 
you sound like you done lost your mind. The opinions of other people will stop somebody from confessing Jesus Christ. That's when you have to use discernment and move them to the side and take them out for coffee. Take them for a walk. But it's your sacrifice. Say that again. It's your sacrifice that's going to get the gospel out. Amen? Amen. I want to end here. Paul makes this statement. He says that all who hear me might become like me. Isn't that a statement by itself? That all who hear me might become